Hey everybody, how are you? Well, it's obvious that I am not at home. <laughs> I'm in somebody's house, but it's not my house. Uh, Wednesday night I flew into Phoenix to uh, visit with my parents, and I am actually at my parents' house in far, far northern Phoenix. And um, however, on my plan, kind of on my my uh, my plan for the day was to do a um, Facebook Live and talk about kind of in honor of National Preparedness Month, which kind of which leads into beginning October 6th, uh, Fire Prevention Week. And so I really wasn't prepared for all of the house fire stories that I got here right here on Facebook. In fact, I asked one of uh, the women who mentioned a house fire, Rose, to tell me her story, and I'll probably be putting that in a blog post sometime soon because um, they're devastating. They really are. And kind of while I'm waiting for Facebook to um, kind of alert people that, hey, you know, we have a Facebook Live going, um, something else that's, happen that's happening in my neck of the woods. Have you have raise your hand if you've heard of the Houston floods? Yep. I got out of Phoenix Wednesday night, and early on Thursday, my son sent me a text message and said, hey, our classes are canceled today, and he's taking dual credit classes at a community college, and I was like, oh, you know, maybe the weather, you know, weather forecasting is a whole lot better, of course, than it used to be, but still, you know, some people were predicting maybe just a, uh, hey there, Margaret, uh, we're predicting maybe a an inch or two of water, and then some were saying it's going to be almost like Harvey, 20-some inches of rain, and huh, people were either panicking or they were just saying, eh, you know, normalcy bias, normalcy bias, hey, they've done this before, and we're not going to have any problem, hey, Cal, um, but sure enough, oh my gosh, uh, hi there, Vicki Mingus. Nice to see you. Um, sure enough, I started watching uh, the forum for my town and uh, started, you know, getting in touch with people. And it was a disaster, a disaster. Homes were flooded. In fact, in one part of the town, in one community, there uh, they had flooding there back in, I think, spring. It was may maybe March or March through May, some kind of in that time frame. And some of those people had just gotten back in their house and flooded here come the floodwaters again and in some places the water was you know waist deep and people were you know wading through it and uh, you know my son was home alone my husband was actually bad luck he had to be down right in the middle of Houston and the rain was coming down and he was sending me videos and he was saying I don't know if I'm gonna get out of here eventually at the end of the day using Waze or you know some other map app he was able to go here and there and all the circuitous circuitous route and eventually get home but uh, the floods are very very they're a very serious thing and uh, we're gonna talk in just a couple minutes about house fires but in both cases I was kind of weighing these back and forth in a house fire you potentially pretty much almost lose everything. And it can determine, you know, depending on the smoke damage, um, depending on the smoke damage, well, there may be some things that are salvageable, but a lot of times it's just the smoke damage is just, you know, just as bad as the flames. So, um, what, so what was worse? And I began thinking about the people whose homes are flooded. Have you ever experienced a house flood or a house fire? You can just leave in a comment. In a flood, you can lose everything. But you can also, as you begin to rip out the carpets and you can, you know, rip out the sheetrock and you're going through and you have all your kitchen spices and you have your, maybe your, uh, some of your emergency food and you have your first aid kit floating over there and you have the, you know, the couches with the pillows floating, you can at least do an inventory. So over in Survival Mom Sisterhood, uh, I gave them a challenge. In Survival Mom Sisterhood, it's a membership uh, for women, and every single month they get about a 30 to 60 minute masterclass in a topic. I always give them a challenge, and Vicki is one of the members, and I don't know if uh, Vicki, you can let us know if you did this month's challenge, but this month, and I'll give you the challenge. This month the challenge was take a look at your insurance. And I know, I know that in the whole world of survivalists and preppers, we don't want to talk about insurance. That's boring, right? It's not sexy at all. You know, we want to talk about an EMP and we want to talk about bug out bags and what to do to, you know, fix up our pickup so it's a really awesome bug out vehicle. But I've got to tell you, and you know this in your heart and heart, of heart of hearts, you know that when something happens, a medical emergency or, um, Gosh, there's a, a car accident 
or there's a storm and you have a roof leak, what do you do first? Be honest with me. You call your insurance company or your insurance agent if you have one, have one. And no, it's not glamorous, and no, it might be a little bit tedious to kind of take a look and do an inventory, but I am telling you, the people in uh, the Houston area, and actually not just Houston, but Conroe, uh, Kingwood, Splendora, big, big area there, that was just, uh, they were horribly flooded. And so today, who do you think they called first? Yeah, they called their insurance agent insurance company so here's the challenge that I gave my survival mom sisterhood members um, you can have pick two all right number one call your insurance agent I know this is boring I sound like I actually I sound like your mother call your insurance agent or your insurance company and just ask them you know can we talk about you know what kind of coverage I have and uh, one of the survival mom sisterhood members uh, I think it was Liz she said they moved into their house like maybe 15 years ago and they have done nothing with their homeowner's insurance since. So today's the day. Today's the day. And the second challenge, you can do that. The second challenge is to go from room to room and just collect anything that in your, uh, for you is called a valuable, anything valuable. So it could be a wedding album. It could be your kid's photo albums. It could be jewelry. It could be something handed down to you by your parent or your grandmother. Put all those things together, firearms, um, you know, everything, everything that you would consider valuable and do an inventory, do an inventory. If it was all washed away in floodwaters, if it was all burnt to a crisp in a house fire, God forbid, um, you would have that inventory written down. So what do you do with that inventory? Super simple. Email it to yourself. Put it in an email. And then no matter where you are in the world, you can log in to your email account and just do a search and you'll find that. In fact, you might want to make a little file folder in your email system, um, maybe like a insurance, insurance docs or something like that, and then just save it in that file folder and it's there for you. At the same time, why don't you send yourself an email with the names and phone numbers of all your insurance agents? All right, your car insurance, your homeowner's insurance, your renter's insurance, your health insurance. Put all that in one document. Send it to yourself as an email, all right, and it'll be there for you when you need it. Cal says that he's seen too many houses burn down during floods in New Orleans, sparks from the from electricity. And actually, Cal, I'm so glad you mentioned electricity. So today, if you are a subscriber to my emails, and I don't know that all of you are, but uh, you'll have a chance to subscribe in a little bit later. But today I sent out actually a schedule. So I am working with uh, a really innovative, innovative new product called Smoke Shield. And I'll tell you about that later. But that is, I'm combining that with a series of live events. This one is the first one, and maybe it's the most humble. But uh, uh, live events, and it's just going to all be around house fire safety home safety, what to do with your pets. Uh, we'll talk about smoke shield, of course, because I think that might be um, maybe that like the missing layer when it comes to getting our homes uh, kind of safe and prepared for a house fire. And Cal, I'll bet those homes in New Orleans were probably pretty old. So when we lived in Phoenix, we lived in new homes, fairly new homes. And uh, new construction, new wiring, and everything was up to code. Um, when we moved into Texas, our home was built in 72, and it's an old house. And I'll tell you this, this is a little little story before I get into, you know, some of like the, the meat of today. But the first thing I did when I moved to Texas was I took a CERT class. And CERT, C-E-R-T, it is a worthwhile class to take. They're offered for free. Not every city, not every county offers them, but you can look it up. You can go to the, I think it's Citizen Emergency Response Team. And I went through the class and I will never, I think my most memorable lesson was when the fire marshal came, well, fire marshals, you know, when I was a school teacher, we always had to have a heads up when the fire marshal came to make sure we didn't have any papers, you know, here and there in the classroom that weren't supposed to be there. So the fire marshal shows up and he starts talking about house fires and then he starts talking about burns. And then he informs us that if someone has a, uh, a burn that is a certain level, I forget the, the class of level, whether it's a um, third degree burn, whatever, the really bad ones, in order for them to avoid any infection of the burned area, they have to, and this is what he said, so if you're a nurse and you know better, let me know, or a doctor, let me know. But he said they have to take actually a wire brush, a wire brush, and they have to scrape away every single bit of charred skin. And he said, usually the person just passes out. And for reasons, I think, affecting like the blood flow of the person, they cannot give them any pain meds. Well, guess who, home, guess who went home after that cert class and told my husband, what the heck is up in our attic? 
because I don't want to risk anything. And in Phoenix, we had all kinds of stuff up in the attic of our house. And here we really don't have a whole lot because I don't want anybody taking a metal brush to my skin. <laughs> that would just sound absolutely horrific. And I was like, thank God, you know, that you have, your body has the, pat, the, the capability of just passing out. So let's talk a little bit about home fire safety. And that is a part of National Preparedness Month. Um, raise your hand or make a com leave a comment. Have you noticed that it's National Preparedness Month? Have you seen that promoted anywhere? In the past, I haven't caught it the, this month, but in the past, a lot of times, different organizations will have commercials and they'll show you know, maybe someone grabbing a go bag if there's a, a storm or if there's a, a, an earthquake or something because the focus is on just being prepared. And it's actually really good timing. So if you have been thinking to yourself, maybe it's time I put an emergency kit together for you know, the first time or I take a look at the one that's under the bed or you know in the back of my pickup or whatever this is a good time to do it the kids are back in school and if you have kids or grandkids you know that that is almost a pivotal time to just everything gets back in place so if you asked me during the summer hey Lisa can you do something on Tuesday morning I don't know you know my daughter's home my son's home I don't know what we're doing you ask me now and I'll say yeah I'm gonna be home because my son is taking those two classes at the college and I drop him off <laughs> I know exactly where I am because of routine so we're getting back into that routine and it is a great time a great time to turn your focus on how are we prepared are we prepared so home fires if you do nothing else I want you to do this um, over in the notes section of uh, the, the description for this I have a free house fire safety checklist and here's what's really interesting is I was putting it together and I'm gonna kind of pull it up for myself for for reference but as I was putting it together there we go I was making a note of, oh, we need to do this for the house, and we need to get this ready with the pets, and what about smoke detectors, and you know, and all kind of going through that in my mind. But over and over and over again, the things that kept popping up in my mind were things that had to do with people. You can have a smoke detector, uh, you can have smoke detectors lining uh, the hallway, you know, 10 in a row. But if people don't know what to do when it sounds, you just wasted, you know, what, 20 some bucks a, a smoke detector? So the most important piece, and I want you to get this, I want you to have this completely free, it's a, I think I talk, call it, let me get the right title, Home Fire Safety Checklist. Sometimes I name things and I forget what I name them. Home Fire Safety Checklist. And you're going to notice right off the bat, the first thing, get your family ready. Do, does everyone in the family know what a smoke alarm sounds like? Um, does everyone know uh, how to open the windows? When we moved into this much older house, I began looking at my kids' windows. And in older houses, I guess back in the day, those windows were high up. So my daughter, she's not short. She's maybe about five six, average height. She actually would have to stand on something to get out of that window. So here's what you do. You first, all right? You go to every room in the house, bathrooms included. And you stand there and you say, if there was a fire and I could not get out of this room, how would I get out? Could I escape? So in my bathroom, I would have to find something in that bathroom. There's a toilet, there's a uh, bathtub shower, and then there's a narrow window. Um, I could fit through the narrow window, <laughs> thank God. <laughs> but double check, double check, you know? So how would you get out of each and every room? The doorway is one exit, that counts. But if that doorknob is hot, if you open that door and there's smoke, you close the door and then you get out the other way. So the first thing you do, and I want you to do this uh, by the end of the weekend, I want you to go through every single room and say, okay, if I was stuck, how would I get out? And then if you were stuck, do you need anything? So do you need to keep like maybe um, a hammer, you know, a little something where you could break a window open? Uh, do you have something that you could stand on in order to get out of the window? Do you have, do you know how to open the windows? Do you have the physical strength? We have a couple windows in our house where I would actually have to just kind of really just, you know, jerk at that can, that, that uh, window, sliding window really hard. Is If there's a screen there, can it just be popped out? I mean, can you just even imagine, you know, worst case scenario, and someone can't get out of a house and they suffer smoke in inhalation, which is the number one reason people uh, die from a house fire. It's not for being burned. It's actually that smoke inhalation. It damages their lungs. They cannot breathe. And then if someone doesn't get to them really quickly, you know, they, they, they perish. So number one, uh, what are the exits from every room? The, the door counts as one, but what is a secondary exit point? 
Number two, uh, what would you have to do to get out of that secondary exit point? Would you have to break a window? If so, how, what do you use? And what instructions would you give kids if they ever had to do that? Because you don't want them, you know, slashing themselves on the, on the way out. Um, then number three, I think I'm in order here. Um, make sure everyone knows how to open the windows. Okay. And if that means you have to get some WD-40 and you have to take care of, you know, the sliding gadgets and everything else, the rollers, whatever the case may be, make sure you take care of that. That is so easy. Okay. Is anything I mentioned yet, has it cost anything? You know, some of the most, most important preps, I guess we would call them, some of the most important ones are really inexpensive. Um, check your smoke alarms. On some, some of these are on the list, but I really want to emphasize those exits. Um, the second category, getting your family ready, that is a big category. It covers um, special needs. Um, so if you have someone, this is a concern of mine because um, in my lifetime, I have been friends with families who have had different kinds of special needs family members. And honestly, that could just be, you know, you yourself or someone who's just older and you just don't move as fast. Or you say to yourself, I'm not so sure I could climb up on a chair, break a window and get out, Lisa. Okay. Well, now you know that. You're not discovering it now where smoke is just pouring into the room and you're coughing, you're choking, your eyes are watering, and you might just have, you know, just moments before you pass out. That's not the time to figure out that you can't uh, get up to a window and crawl out. Maybe what you need to do is put something very heavy duty on the outside of that window. And it might just be, you know, disguised as a plant or put a planted pot on it or something. And you say, okay, you know, I have this very sturdy little table. And I could, if I needed to, get, I, know I can open the window, number one. I have a way to get up into the window entrance and then out. And then I have something there that I can step on. Honestly, everything there could just cost, you, you might have absolutely everything you need right now. So special needs, you might want to say, depending on, you know, the, the scenario, practicing is a big part of it. Just knowledge and discussing it. Uh, drills, as you drill, I have read that you should have this kind of a drill, a fire drill, maybe once a month. Because what it's going to do is it's going to create something called, called automaticity. And automaticity is just that instant automatic response. I see this, I know what to do. I am told this, I know what to do. When someone is very a very, very fluent reader, that automaticity has just been built up there. So what you're wanting to do is create that in this kind of a scenario. And there are things on this list that you will get. All right, the survivalmom.com forward slash house fire. All right, get it. And it, actually, you're going to get an email and it's going to tell you exactly what to do. You download this right now. You print it out right now. You get busy right now. Um, and I love to hear in comments and in emails, um, I'm going to be putting this on YouTube. I would love to hear your progress with this because we hear things, we read things, and almost nobody acts on things. And I want you to act. So going back to uh, a family member that may, uh, may be deaf, you know, maybe there are vision issues, uh, someone who uh, is bedridden, what are you going to do? And I heard recently this phrase, figure outable. Everything is figure outable. So whatever your scenario is, it is figure outable. And um, that would just, you, you don't want to leave anyone behind. And that includes your pets. And you all know I have pets. You all know I love my pets. Um, with your pets, and this all has to do with your kids, when there is just something, and it's life-threatening, and it's scary, and maybe you as the adult, you as the parent or grandparent, your heart is pounding. That is not the time to discover that your kids or your grandkids or your pets have kind of uh, developed this habit of ignoring you. <laughs> have you ever been ignored by your kids? I have, I've been ignored by my, by my pets. The pets that will obey, okay, most likely dogs, um, begin training. Have them train, you know, you call them, you call them, you call them, you have a you have, you have a treat, you have a treat, you have a treat. And as that becomes, I don't have to teach, I don't, I'm not a professional dog trainer, but I do know the dogs love treats, they love cheese. And so again and again and again, and then you call them and maybe this time there's not a treat. Next time, there's a treat. Next time, there's a treat. The next time, there's not a treat. The next time, there's not a treat. And gradually, what you're building is just that response where it is the voice that they are coming toward, not the treat. And the reason that's so important is if you discover there's a house fire, 
uh, you want to be able to call those pets and they come immediately. You want to call those kids and they come immediately, right? So that is really important. And again, well, it's free. It's just going to take a little bit of time. Your pets, along with every the people in your house, we're going to need some kind of a go bag. And for a go bag, we can even brainstorm about this. And I have articles on the blog with uh, different kind of uh, emergency kits for uh, for dogs and cats. But at the very minimum, you don't want your cat to get out and run away. That has happened in my town. There have been house fires. And then before you know it, we see notices on uh, our community Facebook page, our community forum. Hey, has anyone seen Snowball? We had a house fire. We can't find her. She got out. So the first thing you do is get the dog. Um, if you can, if you want to put it in a kennel, make sure the kennel is nearby. Otherwise, a leash. All right, put the leash around your wrist, you know, and hold on to that with your thumb, so you have the wrist, and then you have your also thumb uh, closing in on that, and that would be a, a must. In fact, there was someone, might be on Facebook, he said that for his dogs, he had leashes right by the door, and maybe that's my, where you might want to keep them. And a go bag for a pet might have their vaccine record. You might have a veterinarian record and the reason for that is if you do have to leave them at a shelter they will almost they always they always require that they have vaccines so if you have that already then you don't have to worry about that part you might also and you're in the kennel have I don't think this is on my checklist but you might have one have a list of um, animal shelters and veterinarians so if your home is lost and this would apply to a flood as well or anything really um, you can start calling and you know start with your own vet and say hey could you board you know, snowball for a few days, you know, our house burned down or we're out of our house for some reasons, could you take care of that? And have those kennel phone numbers right there with you and the website. Sometimes you can, um, you know, make uh, make reservations for your pet online, all right, like a, little, like a little hotel. So the pets are really important and I've included them in this checklist. Uh, for those of you that are watching, do you have a question or a comment about um, this Printable. I'll bet some of you have already downloaded the printable, and I'm so glad for that. Um, it really is important because sometimes there are things that you really just uh, you can't really prepare for. Sometimes life just hits us hard, and you think I couldn't have prepared for that. And then there are some things that you can. And a house fire is one of them. And a house fire does not have to happen. So that brings me to uh, telling you about the schedule. All of the live events are going to be recorded. They're going to be replays available on Facebook, and they will also show up on YouTube. All right, so if you see this weeks or months down the road, just take a look at my YouTube channel or come to Facebook. Those of you that are in Survival Mom Sisterhood, these videos will all be there for you. Okay, no need to look around. Um, coming up, I mentioned earlier Smoke Shield. So when you're thinking about layers, everything is layers, right? Uh, home security, it's all about layers. Food storage, it's about layers. Water storage, defense, it's all layers. There is no one, one answer or one solution to take care of everything in every kind of scenario. So the layers, just kind of a, a few practical layers. The first layer that's obvious is just a smoke alarm. Uh, carbon dioxide alarm, carbon monoxide alarm, um, if, uh, if you believe that's important. Number two are um, fire extinguishers, and that's on the list along with a tip for those. And then number three, think about this for a second. What I was talking earlier about special need loved ones, someone who uh, in a crisis, you're thinking to yourself, it is hard enough to get this person in, out the door and in a car just to go on an errand. And I've had parents tell me that their child is, would fit that, uh, that description. If there's someone that is just, it would be very, very difficult to get them out. The smoke shield was developed as a last chance, a last chance option. When the hallways are so full of smoke, there's no way you can make it out. And for whatever reason, you can't get out of a certain room. The smoke shield was developed by someone who was um, a military vet, first of all, but he also was a volunteer firefighter, and he had had, you know, his fair share of house fire response, you know, being a responder to those, and then he's also an emergency uh, response doctor. So the smoke shield, and I'm actually inviting him on an official uh, inventor's interview coming up uh, on Wednesday, September 25th. And he'll be available for your questions, but the smoke shield is something you can install very easily inside a closet, inside a small space where you could get there. Everyone could get there. And instantly, as soon as that detects uh, smoke, this uh, smoke shield begins um, cycling through that, the, the smoke, the toxic air, and creates breathable, safe air for you in that enclosure.
And at the same time, it's, it begins flashing a red LED light outside of that closet or outside of that safe room. So when firefighters uh, you know, arrive, they know exactly where you are. And if you're inside that closet, we'll call it a closet, if you're inside there, you're able to make a 911 call yourself. So I wanted to talk to you about that because that is something that is, um, you know, we all need we all need an option when your back is to the wall. And so with um, a lot of times with food storage, you think, OK, I have all this food storage. If our back is ever to the wall, then we're going to eat such and such. All right. So the smoke shield is really that kind of a right kind of that product. So you're, I have had a lot of questions. I've written down about 15 questions I have for him, but I want to give him a chance to tell us about the smoke shield and you know as that extra layer that it offers some in some scenarios more than others so i am going to close this up i'm inviting you to get that printable house fire home fire safety checklist at the survivalmom.com forward slash house fire and in the email that you're going to get it's going to give you a link to that uh, printable I'm telling you, like I'm your mom, I'm telling you exactly what to do. One, two, three, four, five, six. And if you do nothing else but those six steps, you know, just a few days from now, you can say, you know what? If there was a house fire, everybody knows what to do. Everybody knows how to get out. Everybody, you know, everybody has uh, something that has been delegated to them. We know what to do with the pets. Wow. That's progress. That's real progress. So I am going to stop. I'm at 26 minutes. I usually try to stick under 20. So I want to just uh, thank you. And if you have questions or comments about Smoke Shield, about what we've talked about here today, uh, feel free to leave them. And um, coming up, not only do we have on Wednesday the 25th, we're going to have the interview with the inventor of Smoke Shield. But the very next day, I will do a Facebook Live. We'll talk a little bit about if you've had a chance to watch it, if you've had questions that have come to mind. And then I forgot the best for last. I have. It's my husband. My husband, you may know him, he's a Texas master electrician. And this man knows electrical stuff. He knows the electrical code. He is the master electrician for a really big power company in, in Texas. And he is going to join us on October Sunday, Sunday night, October 6th. And he is going to be talking all about electricity and house fires. Electrical this, electrical that, it is one of the top causes of house fires. So we're going to kind of wind up the whole house fire, you know, home safety. Uh, about two, We're going to give it about two weeks, and we're going to end it on October 6th uh, with him. And he's going to be telling you all about, you know, what to look for around the house, inside and outside, to make sure that you don't have to deal with an electrical fire on top of everything else. All right? Hey, I'm going to end the video, and you can look for this over on YouTube. Survival Mom Sisterhood members, it'll be there in just a little bit. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.